I'm Leandra Fordham and I chose to do my oral presentation, PowerPoint presentation on exercise basics. A couple of the topics we will talk about today is general exercise safety, hydration, equipment, shoes, and how to stay motivated. Our first topic will be general exercise safety and what you should do before you start to exercise. The first thing you would need to do is to see or to make a pre-exercise screening. This is important especially if you have any um, previous injuries, um, any health concerns as in like uh, chest or lungs, respiration concerns, or if you've had any surgeries, um, heart concerns, you would just need to go and talk to your doctor and see if there's any precautions you need to be taking before you start a certain exercise um, routine. The next thing is learn the techniques. In any kind of exercise that you will be doing, you need to, to know what to expect, whether it's weightlifting, CrossFit, um, yoga, Pilates, anything that you get into, you need to at least know what to expect before you go and start on this new exercise journey. And the next thing is find a qualified instructor, whether this is a one-on-one -on -one instructor or a um, group setting. Do your research. Make sure that these people know what they're talking about, that they are certified to teach these classes because if you go into a class um, and these people don't know what they're talking about, then they can actually injure you, give you false information. So do your research and find a qualified instructor. Next um, is injury risk. Um, if you have had previous surgeries or you've had severe injuries to any of your joints, your muscles, bones, anything like that, you need to know what type of exercises might agitate these injuries or these um, just that might agitate your injuries may re-injure that injury so make sure you know have the knowledge of what exercise will be best for you if you've already had pre-existing injuries or if just in injuries in general that these exercises might cause next um, learn the modifications every exercise has a modification um, whether it's a completely different movement or it's slowing the speed down on an exercise, your instructor should be able to tell you what the modifications are because exercise should be for anybody at any level. So whether you're a beginner um, or advanced, you should know the modifications of every exercise. Lastly is recovery day. Your body needs time to recover. Um, it needs time to rebuild those muscles that you've, that you've exercise and you've put through uh, some strenuous activity it needs time to to rebuild uh, the muscle tissue um, and you need to listen to your body whether it's you've exercised three days in a row and you're like okay well now I need a recovery day or you've exercised five days in a row you need to have at least one recovery day a week next we're going to talk about exercises that could be harmful to anybody. Um, bouncing while stretching. You don't need to bounce while you stretch um, because that can tear some muscles um, when you're doing that bouncing motions. So instead of bouncing, you need to at least hold the stretch. Do not move for 15 to 20 seconds. Um, and then once you feel that the muscles have relaxed or you feel like they have stretched a little bit, then you can you know, push yourself a little more. There's two types of pain when there comes to stretching. There's a good pain and a bad pain. Good pain is feeling that muscle stretch and feeling it elongate. Bad pain is when you're like, ow, this, you know, this really hurts. So um, then that's when you should stop and let your body rest. Next thing is standing toe touches. Um, when you stand up and you spread your feet apart and you lean over to, to stretch, to touch your toes, that can actually strain the hamstrings, especially if your knee is, is it fully straight. Um, an alternative of this would put your leg on an elevated surface and then stretch that way. Or you can lay on your back, make sure, oh, make sure that your 
knee is slightly bent when you do these stretches. Um, or you can put your one leg in the air and stretch it like that, pull it towards you, make sure the knee is slightly bent, and then switch and do the other leg. Next is um, deep full squats. Um, these can put a strain on the ligaments, the cartilage, and the muscles because um, it's making your knees go to a 90 degree angle or more. So try doing half squats, maybe at a 45 degree angle, uh, or look at yourself in the mirror and check your form to make sure that you're not putting any strain on those muscles in your knees and your legs and in your back. Um, Sit-ups. These are when you come all the way up. You usually have somebody sit on your feet and then you try to pull all the way up. That can put a strain on your lower back. So instead, just do like little small ab crunches and put your arms across your chest to prevent strain on your back. Um, next would be double leg raises. This also puts a stretch uh, strain on your back. So instead, just do... Um, one leg at a time and stretch because moving those legs at the same time then that like I said puts a strain on your back but if you do them one leg at a time and keep the leg that's on the ground bent that'll at least lessen the strain on your back. Uh, lastly is behind the head behind the neck press. You do not need to do this if your shoulders are unstable. I mean that's just what it is. I mean you can have a spot and start off with easy weight um, but if you know that you have un unstable shoulders, you do not need to do this exercise. Next is stretching. It's always good to stretch before and after your workout. Um, doing a warm-up, you need to have at least 5 to 10 minutes of low-intensity movement and stretching. This helps to prevent injury once you have started your exercise. And then... After your exercise, you need to do a cool down at least five minutes before your exercise is over. Start that cool down. And then once the exercise is over, you can have an extra um, five to ten minutes of just low intensity movement. Um, this helps with soreness and stiffness of your muscles after you have just really worked them out. Um, next is exercising in hot weather, the symptoms of overheating. Um, you have irritability, general discomfort, weakness, headache, nausea, and cramps. Uh, so these are signs if you're exercising in a hot environment that you would need to look out for. Once you start feeling these things, it would be great for you to just maybe slow the exercise down, do a modification of the exercise, listen to your body. You know when your body, if you know your body, you should know when it's starting to feel like it's um, overheating. And the next thing is how to avoid these symptoms. Drink plenty of water before and during and after your exercise. You need to stay hydrated. Also, you can wear lightweight clothes, um, especially if you're in a hot, hot, if you're exercising outside or maybe you're doing hot yoga or something, make sure you wear loose fitting, lightweight clothes. Nothing long sleeve, nothing too tight on you. Um, that would constrict your body from breathing and sweating. Next, exercise in cooler parts of the day. Like I said, if you're exercising outside, try to do it whenever it's not 12 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe right there when the sun's going down, or maybe super early in the morning before the sun comes up where it's cooler during the day so you don't have to, your body is not, also the heat of the day is not adding to your body overheating. Um, if need be, lastly, reduce exercise intensity. If you're going hard and, and you're feeling a little nauseous or you're feeling a little lightheaded, maybe just take a break, take a few deep breaths and slow down um, on the intensity of the workout. Next is exercising in cold weather. Um, really the only thing that you need to focus on when you exercise in cold weather is wear the proper attire. Um, if, it's, if it's cold outside, um, you need to wear at least long sleeves and long pants. I know once you start exercising, it gets hot, but you're still breathing in that cold air, so you don't want to expose um, your body also to that cold air that you're also breathing in. And lastly, you need to still drink plenty of water. Um, you still lose a lot of, of fluids when you exercise in cold weather just because it's cold and you're not maybe sweating as much as you would when it's hot. doesn't mean that you're not um, losing hydration, so you need to stay hydrated. And devote more time to stretching. 
it's cold outside, so it takes your muscles longer to get warmed up. So make sure that you um, spend more time stretching if it is colder um, environment. Next is hydration. How much water should you drink? Um, this is just referring to when you're exercising. So two to three hours before you start exercising, you need to have at least drink in 17 to 20 ounces of water. Um, so that can be when you first wake up and you go ahead and you just start drinking water um, to start your day off. You can get those ounces in before you start your workout. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes before you work out, you need to have at least drink in eight ounces of water. You can do this before you work out or during your warm up. Now during your exercises, every 10 to 20 minutes, you need to have drank um, seven to 10 ounces of water. Um, just because you know you might be in the zone and you're focused, but you still need to drink water because you're um, losing water through your sweat. Um, and then 30 minutes after you exercise, you need to at least drink eight ounces of water. This is just to help your body recover, and you know you just worked out and sweated a lot, so you need to have uh, stay hydrated. Dehydration, the symptoms of dehydration, um, dizziness or lightheaded feeling, nausea or vomiting, uh, muscle cramps, dry mouth, uh, and lack of sweating, and hard or fast heartbeat. Um, this is also goes with like the feeling of overheating. Um, when you start feeling these things, it might mean that you are dehydrated. You can also feel these even when you're not exercising. I have a hard time drinking a lot of water. Water is not my favorite thing to drink, but then there could be days where I'm like, wow, I haven't even drink, drinking any water today, and I notice that I have a headache, or I'm a little bit more tired than when I was the day before. So then I usually just go ahead and realize, hey, I need to drink more water. Um, so how to treat dehydration? Drink water. That's the first thing is stay hydrated and drink your water. Um, drink fruit juice, not a lot of fruit juice because it has a lot of sugar in it. So maybe um, mix in the wa some water with that fruit juice to dilute it. But um, it gives you a little bit more something that water doesn't. I mean, that sugar might help you bring up your blood sugar if you know your blood sugar is low because you are dehydrated. Or you can eat soup or drink broth. Um, this also just gives a little bit more substance than what water doesn't have. Next, we're going to talk about sports drinks, the advantages and disadvantages of sports drinks. Some of the advantages of sports drinks is it rebuilds your electrolytes. When you exercise, um, you lose electrolytes. So drinking sport drinks helps to reboot those electrolytes because water does not have electrolytes in it unless you find us water that clearly says it helps with has electrolytes. Um, drinking sports drinks helps build those up and helps replenish your fluids that you've lost during exercise. Um, some of the disadvantages is it has a high um, sugar content. So if you're not doing an intense exercise and you really don't need to be drinking um, sports drinks because that sugar is just gonna sit there. You're not burning it up. You're not, your body's not burning it up and using it for energy. It's just gonna sit there and I guess do nothing. No benefits for you. So if you're doing low intensity workout, your best bet is to stick with just water. But high intensity where you're burning a lot of fluids and um, water, then sports drinks are a good way to keep you hydrated and keep your blood sugar um, up. Here's a few pictures. Powerade, Body Armor, and Gatorade. I like to drink. I just got into drinking Body Armor. I really like it. Um, it's not as sweet as Gatorade and Powerade. Um, next, we're going to talk about equipment for beginners. Um, if you're just beginning to work out, these are a few things that um, might can help you. You can buy these things and have you start your own like little home gym. Um, exercising with your own body weight is a good way to start. If you're not sure, like, okay, how do I use these hand weights or how do I use this air bike? Start with just body weights, do your jumping jacks, do some push-ups, do some um, crunches, do planks, um, air squats, anything like that using your own body weight is a good way to start. Um, a punching bag is a good full body exercise. Um, it helps to tone up your body. 
I have never exercised with a punching bag, so um, I don't really know what would be good for, I mean, how your body would react to that. But some people are super in um, to boxing because it also helps relieve stress, I guess, because you're punching something and letting it stress out. But um, it's a good way to tone, tone your body. Have an exercise mat. If you're going to do body weight exercises, then you might need a mat. I mean, it helps with um, knee, like when if you need to do exercise down on your knee, you have a little bit of, of cushioning on your knees or on your elbows, like when you're doing planks and stuff. It's good for to have this when you do yoga or Pilates. Um, a lot of flexibility movement is used when you have an exercise mat. Um, an air bike is just good for cardio. Um, most of the time you're just moving your hands, I mean your arms and your legs. So um, that's helped getting your, your heart rate up. Um, free weight uh, is a good thing just to have in your house. Um, easy to pick up. You can start off with a little two pounds or you can work your way up to 50 pounds, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. But um, you can use free weights in any type of exercise. And then uh, adjustable weight bench, that's good if you're going to start weightlifting. Um, chest, when you're doing chest workouts, you need a flat weight bench. You can do um, incline and just flat. You can also use it for some leg workouts, um, but it's good. It's just good to have. You can use it when you squat. You could use it as just some people sit when they do squats, so um, you could use that as your as your little helper or whatever um but yeah just to have a weight bench is is good to for your little home gym and then a weight belt a weight belt helps um with support of your back especially if you have lower back issues and it also helps out with um form and here's a picture of um free weights a punching bag and your air bike next is cardio equipment um, we have a cross-country ski machine, an elliptical machine, rowing machine, stair, stair stepper or stair master, um, stationary bicycle, and a treadmill. So these things really just help get your heart rate up and going. I mean, you can run on a treadmill, you can walk on a treadmill, uh, stair steppers, you're using, you know, walking up a whole bunch of flights of steps to get your heart rate up. But um, these are just mostly to help um, with cardio, and that helps burn fat. So it just gives you a variety of things that you can use. Because walking on a treadmill can sometimes be boring. You need a little bit of variety. Um, but here's a couple of, this is a row machine that is a stair um, stepper and an elliptical. Next is strength uh, equipment. So you have ankle weights, exercise mat, hand weights, and resistance bands. Um, if you're not using just regular, I mean, free weights, like if you go to a gym, um, then these are some alternatives that you can have at home with your ankle weights and your resistance bands and your hand weights. These help, with especially the resistance band, help the muscles, you know, work a little bit harder because they have that resistance um, ankle weights you can use in any exercise even with walk just walking even with hand weights if you just want to walk with hand weights um, those help tone up those muscles um, and help target a little bit of those smaller muscles next are shoes <laughs> there's quite a few different types of shoes um, cross training weightlifting court shoes running walking and cycling uh, cross training shoes is like for CrossFit. So um, there's a lot of different things that you do with CrossFit. And sometimes you just need um, a flat bottom shoe to help with movement and stability. Um, I know CrossFit, they're, they're just a little wild. So they need a shoe that can accommodate um, their exercises. Uh, weightlifting shoes usually have a little bit of a uh, wedge or a stack or something helps with a range of ankle motion and helps you get into a deeper squat um, when you are doing squats with, with heavy weight. Um, court shoes, that can be basketball shoes, um, tennis shoes, uh, volleyball shoes, whatever. Those shoes are needed for um, to be stable, 
flexible and traction because you're moving all, all across the court so you need that traction to help you not slip. You need that flexibility because you are moving in all different kinds of directions in quick motions. But you also need um, that stability for your ankles or just for your foot in general so that way when you do make those fast motions you're not rolling your ankle or anything like that. Um, running shoes, they usually have uh, heel or arch support um, and a lot of cushioning. Um, avid runners know exactly what kind of shoe to use. I am not an avid runner. Um, but you need something super lightweight also. You don't want to be running and carrying around a five pound shoe. I mean, that's just a little extreme. Um, walking shoes are a lot more flexible. Um, they have a fuller range of motion for the heel toe. Um, movement that you do when you walk. You also would probably want some arch support in your walking shoes. And then cycling shoes, um, you can use these for just stationary bikes or regular bikes. You would need to see what your pedals look like and what kind of shoe would accommodate the bike that you are um, using for cycling. But they clip on and um, they're help for stability so that way you don't, while you're pedaling, you don't your foot doesn't slip off of the bike. And here's a couple of it, or here's some examples of a CrossFit shoe. The, it, uh, the sole is flat. Um, cycling shoes, you see they have these little treads on them. It helps you clip into the, to the pedals, and that way you have a little bit more traction and leverage so your foot doesn't slip off of the pedal. These are just um, basketball shoes. Notice they have a lot of grip on the bottom and the high ankle part helps with that ankle stability so you're not rolling your ankle. Um, walking shoes, just plain old walking shoes. Um, running shoes, Nike, you know, they're uh, known for having a lot of lightweight shoes. Um, and then these are the weightlifting shoes. You see they have that little wedge right there to help with ankle, um, a wider ankle range when lifting weight. And last but not least, we're going to talk about motivation. Um, how to stay motivated. First off, you should write down your goals. Whether it's you want to look a certain way, you want to weigh a certain weight, um, you want to eat better, you need to write down your goals of, of what you're trying to achieve. And post them. Post them all around your house, wherever you need them to go, um, so that you remember, like, okay, this is what I'm working for. This is what I want to do. This is what's going to make me feel a little bit more confident in my body. So just write those down and, and keep reminding yourself of what your goals are. Um, find people to hold you accountable. Uh, find that friend who is also trying to reach certain exercise or weight goals and, um, Y'all stick together and text each other and just be like, hey, you know, did you work out today? Hey, what did you eat today? Um, don't don't have that. Don't ask that friend who doesn't work out and is just lazy and doesn't really care about their health or their weight. Don't have them as your accountability partner. Find someone who's on the same mindset as you. Um, commit to a specific program. I would say beginners um, would need to stick to a specific exercise or program that they're that they're working on just so they can get their foot in the door you don't want to do something for a week and then change it do something else the next week try to stick with it and see what changes um you see in your body just by sticking to that one certain thing um hire a coach uh, whether it's a personal trainer um well that's a workout a personal <laughs> hiring a personal trainer um can help you stay focused. Um, they can help you reach your goals. They can also help you stay accountable. Um, just find someone who knows what they're talking about and can help you reach your goals. Next is vary your training. Once I would say once you have established a certain exercise routine and then you've kind of plateaued like you're really not losing weight or you're not seeing your body change like you want it to after you've done something for a couple weeks, then maybe talk to your coach about, hey, what's something else I can do to help me um, tone up my legs or, you know, uh, lose some more fat or anything? Um, ask them, ask some advice first before you just completely change and realize that, oh, this certain workout is not for me. Um, 
get some advice and seek some guidance first before you start um, varying your training. Next is change your language. Um, a positive mindset. You're not going to see results right there at the beginning. It takes time to see results. So make sure that you keep a positive mind and reassure yourself and be like, hey, you know, you can do this. You're going to see results. You have to stick with it. Don't have a negative mindset of, oh, well, I ate a salad yesterday and I don't feel any better. No, I mean, eat multiple salads a day. <laughs> I mean, you eventually see the results. And then build a reward system. Once you have reached a certain goal, celebrate. Have a good time. Um, just once you reach a certain goal, reward yourself with whatever makes you happy. With whatever, I mean, don't go and just like binge eat or whatever. Or don't exercise for a week because then you're going to lose everything that you just gained. Um, but, I mean, if you feel like once you've reached a certain goal, you deserve a shopping spree because you've lost some weight. So now you know that you can't fit in some of the clothes or you need a spa day. Just go and um, um, reward yourself. So that's the end of my presentation of Exercise Basics. I hope you learned a little bit something that you did not know. I know that I did. And um, thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it.